The title of today's message is Building Our Community. And now, this has kind of been something that's been on my heart for a while. And we, we, we look at it and we pray about what does it take to be pillars in our community? What does it take to help build our community? And so in Galatians chapter 6, verses 2 through 5, it says, Share each other's burdens, and in this way obey the law of Christ. If you think you are too important to help someone, you are only fooling yourself. You are not that important. Pay careful attention to your own work, for then you will get the satisfaction of a job well done, and you won't need to compare yourself to anyone else. For we are each responsible for our own conduct. I don't say this very often, but it's really been on my heart to say and remind us we all have a civic duty. We all have a responsibility to contribute to our community. And now I know we all do a lot of different things. There are a lot of different things. But I want to go over this again because when we think about contributing, when we think about what we do, sometimes it's easy to just work our job, go home, try to keep everything else running at home and, and survive there. And we kind of lose sight of all of these other things that are happening in the world around us, except that, and I'm telling you, this is something that I've had to work on. It's easy to get on the news, internet, whatever it is. For me, mostly internet is how I get the news. To get on the internet, look at the news, and get disgruntled. Get frustrated about the things I see. Get frustrated about why is this happening? Why are people doing that? And what about this? And what about that? And sometimes it's even easier to get involved in conversations with people and talking about all the words of the world and how we could fix it. But it's kind of like that lazy old relative you got that shows up at your house and starts telling you all the things you need to do at your house. And then they leave, but they never pick up a hammer, right? And you're kind of like, <laughs> well, Thank you for all this wonderful advice, but how about have, grab a hammer, grab some nails, you know, help us out with this. And so the biggest thing that God put on my heart is for us to realize that we need to be the change we actually want to see in our community. And how does that go? What does that look like? What is that calling, God calling us to do? Well, we have to be an influencer. Have you seen them on the internet? People just sit make TikTok videos, YouTube videos, all of these Facebook videos, right? And what do they do? They just comment on everyday things, everyday issues. And some people end up making a big living just being an influencer, telling people, this is what I think about this, this is what I think about that. And oftentimes we think, okay, if I just vote, I've done my, I've done my duty, I've done my responsibility. And the person I wanted did get elected, and so that means that that's all I can do. That's it. And we get kind of caught up in being frustrated. We get irritated about the system that we see around us, and we're like, nothing's happening. Nothing's changing. Nothing's getting better. And I find myself in that place sometimes, saying, Lord, what, 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 what is it that you want us to do? What is it that you're calling? How do you want us to actually help build our community. And I think one of the biggest things that God's saying is, hey, I call you guys to be the boots on the ground. It's a lot easier to say, I have people that take care of that, right? How many of you guys all have a butler, huh? None of you guys have a maid? Butler, maid, nobody's cleaning your house every week for you, right? We end up having to do a ton of these jobs. But there's some sort of concept in our country where people think, hey, wait a second, I need somebody to do that job for me. And we like the idea that people do certain jobs for us. I mean, it's nice to have somebody shovel your walks. It's, it's nice to have somebody paint your house. And sometimes we have gotten so used to having somebody do everything for us or different things for us that we then say, well, I have somebody that is elected in government to represent me. And I don't think we realize all of the working components that go into the world around us, into our communities, to actually make our communities operate. 
And so as I was praying about this and saying, oh, Lord, you know, what, what, what do we do to become more influencers in our community so we can help? It's easy to complain. It's easy to look at things and go, this is a mess. Oh, I can't believe that person's doing this. Oh, I'm tired of always seeing that. But how do we actually influence? Everybody says, well, you do it at the voter booth. Well, that's one way, but that is not the only way. In fact, I think that's almost the easy way out. It's easy to vote and make a decision. It's a lot harder to have to give of yourself or give of your time in your community to help other people, especially when any type of statistics you look, most people are not grateful for the work you give. Most people are not grateful for your contribution. Let me tell you, as being a pastor and running a church, and the phone calls I get of people having the expectation of this church to just hand out money, give them this, give them that, you'll just do this, well, you're a church, right? And then the question is, is well, wait a second, we're here to help people, we're here to take care of people, but we're not here to be at somebody's disposal because they don't understand how society works and they want to take advantage of society. So it becomes very difficult when we say, how do I actually influence and help? I want to reach lives. I want to keep our country on a moral track. I want to keep on some of the things that we see that they're doing in local things, whether it's the school, the library, the local governments, whatever it is. And you go, why are they doing this? And then the question is, what do we do to help contribute to build in the community? I can tell you from experience, I've been to a lot of city council meetings and county commissioner meetings. And let me tell you how many people from the public ever show up to those. Oh, get one big issue and you could get a crowd of people that come in. But everyday issues, just monitoring how your government operates, people don't go to them. But we're the first to get on the internet and go, why'd they do this? why they do? I can't believe they're doing these things. And so it's important for us, as we want to have influence in our communities, as we want to see good morals and good principles being carried out in our community, we actually have to have a role. And that doesn't just mean being elected to be the president. It doesn't mean being a congressperson. It's everyday things that we can do. And so in scripture, they talk about cupbearer. How many of you guys have heard this? This person's a cupbearer. Like, what, what is a cupbearer? So basically, a cupbearer is, is almost like a, a, a butler for a king or somebody. And they bring them their food and their water, but their responsibility is to taste test it, make sure that it's not been poisoned, not been tainted, all of these types of issues. But they become very close with who they're serving, right? They get to know them very, very well. They have dialogue, they have conversation, and guess what they have? Influence, Right? You think of David, we've been going through David on Bible study, and we talk about David was looking to try and make a successor to be king. A couple of different boys that he was deciding between the issues that were going on there. And Bathsheba, one of his wives, came to him and influenced him and said, hey, Solomon. And then that bear witness with David, and that's how that proceeded. But there was a conversation that happened. Adam and Eve, right? Eve was tempted with the fruit and the serpent, and Eve had influence on her husband, did she not? She was able to be close to him and give him influence. Why do I bring this up? Because oftentimes we think in the world around us, well, I don't count. I don't matter. But every one of us have influence in our community. Every one of us have influence and the ability to make sure that our community continues to progress in a way that's godly, in a way that helps build others, in a way that helps strengthen families. Those are the things that we value. And then we watch different things happen and we're like, oh, I can't believe this is happening. And we lose track of the fact that, hey, I have a responsibility. So point number one is identify a problem that you can fix. So we're going to go through the entire book of Nehemiah. What is that, 13 chapters? No problem. Nobody has a roast in today. We'll get right through it. No, I, I, I'm going to try and get through it quickly. But I, I'm going to go over some main chapters to help, help just kind of lay the groundwork of what Nehemiah did. So in Nehemiah chapters 1 and 2, basically, he, he was a cupbearer for the king. 
And he started to have this burden on the city of Jerusalem. And he's going, this place is in decay. This is where my ancestors were, were buried. This, this is where my family is. And this place is falling apart. And he just goes to the king, who he has influence, and says, hey, I'd like to rebuild Jerusalem. I'd like to make this city back to what it needs to be. I want to fix the walls. And the king and his wife are there together when he approaches them. And yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's set it up. That's the first step. So how do you get to the problem that you can fix? People say, well, I don't like the different things they teach in the school district. I don't like the different ways that our county is spending money. I don't like the different ways that Health and Human Services operates. I don't like our building and planning division doing X, Y, and Z to people. Or to me, right? We have all of these different things that we get frustrated about. And we say, I want to see something change. I want to see something done. And all you have to do is become a cupbearer. All you have to do is get involved to be able to say, I want to see something done about this. There are ordinances that are passed every year in every municipality, every county, every state across this country. And they're all done by influencers, people that are bringing up issues that say, we need to do something about this. And then an elected official taking that and running with it. You don't have to be elected to say, we want to see morality. We want to see a moral compass in our country continue to remain. That's not a bad thing. And sometimes, even the lawmakers lose track of that because they get so caught up in the bill and the pork barreling and all the other issues that go on with the bill, they lose track of the very simple things. I, I, I've seen multiple revisions you guys can see in our, in our government all the time where they'll pass a bill and then the next year they're having to go and fix that bill because they, over, they overlooked half of the things they needed to overlook. They, they shouldn't have overlooked. Why? Because they didn't have enough influencers to give them advice because there's a lot that goes into putting all of that together. So how do we do that? Do we have coffee every week and just complain about everybody? I've been one of those guys, right? I've gone and, oh, I'm frustrated. I'm sick of this, listening to the talk radio people, and they can stir up 100,000 people that get all mad, and that's true, and that does something about educating people, but how many of those people actually go out and become an influencer and actually be the change they want to see in their community? I can tell you over and over again, the government has all sorts of postings for people to volunteer for things, for cupbearers. And you know what? Look at them. Time and again, they have vacancies. You know why? Nobody wants to give of themselves to be an influencer in the community to help see the change that they want to see. And so those things are constantly, constantly churning, and, and, and the level of influence isn't happening. And then we go, man, I get really frustrated. And think about Nehemiah's heart in, in, in verse, or chapter 1, verse 4. He says, when I heard this, I sat down and wept. In fact, for days I mourned, fasted, and prayed to the God of heaven. We all have our moments that we see things that are happening in the world around us. This is very, very simple. He wasn't mad over some political agenda. He was mad to see that a community that his family lived in was falling apart and the walls were falling down and he wanted to do something about it. And it broke his heart that the change hadn't happened. And then he did something about it, which is point number two. Fix it. You want to see something change, you have to do something about it. You have to fix it. And so Nehemiah, he goes to Jerusalem, he has the king's blessing, he organized people to work on the different sections. You know, right away, of course, what happens? He faces opposition. What do we all say? No good deed goes unpunished. We get all upset. Oh, I don't want to get involved because it's just going to add drama to my life. Yep, that's true. It's going to happen. If you want to see a change, though, you're going to have to do more. It's easy to vote. You don't have to deal with any drama. But if you want to do something extra to watch your community change, you have to get out there and actually do something. And so Nehemiah starts working to get this wall going. And in verse, or chapter 4, verse 14, it says, Then as I looked over the situation, I called together the nobles and the rest of the people and said to them, Don't be afraid of the enemy. Remember the Lord who is great and glorious. And fight for your brothers, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your homes. Why is that so important? Because once you start to help, you're going to get attacked. People are going to say things about you. People are going to try and do things to you. Oh, that's true. But if you want to see a change in your community, you have to 
fight for your family. You have to fight for your friends. You have to fight for the children. You have to do the right thing for all of the people around you. Sure, Nehemiah, he dealt with social issues, economic issues, all sorts of usury, debt, slavery. It's all true. All of that happened. He rebuked the nobles. He tried to stay on the right path, right? Instituting reforms, trying to make things different. Why? Because he was an influencer. And what is he trying to do? Was he trying to get the whole world to follow his idealistic view? No. He just wanted a city not to look like it was falling apart and to protect the people. Is that too bad? And people rose up against him. Why? Why? What if, what if somebody said, you know what? I'm going to just be somebody that just goes and volunteers at the library and reads to children. And before you know it, somebody's going to want you to read a book that you don't agree with or that you don't like. And somebody's going to be mad and they're going to raise a whole issue. And you're going to look at them and say, guess what? I'm a volunteer. I get to pick what I want to read. Right? But you still have to deal with people complaining about different things. That's part of how it goes. But I'm going to tell you something. If you're not there reading the book, somebody else will. Somebody else will eventually fill those roles, and then you know what we'll be doing? We'll be sitting around the coffee table, and we'll be complaining about what those people do because they're not doing the values that we want to see in our children, right, or our families or whatever. So we have to be willing to fight for us. We have to fight for each other. We have to fight for the things that we want to see done and not just complain about it. And I'm telling you, it's easy for me to do. And this is a hard message to even talk about because, it, you know, the conviction Right? I sit there and I'm like, oh, I know, I should have, I, I've done, I've said. But the fact of the matter is, is that's what's beautiful about our Savior, right? He, he meets us right where we're at and says, hey, this is how you go forward. These are the things that you can do. Now listen to this. So he goes through all that in Nehemiah chapter 5, verse 11. It says, you must restore their fields, vineyards, olive groves, and homes to them this very day and repay the interest you charged when you lent them money, grain, new wine, and olive oil. What was Nehemiah doing? He was rebuilding a wall, but before you know it, what was he doing? Helping establish a moral compass in a community. Because the walls would have never fallen down if they didn't have a moral compass that had already decayed in the community. We see walls falling down all around us, right? Metaphorically speaking. And that's because there's moral decay within our rules and our system in government. But we can do something about that by getting involved. By being influencers, by helping. And that brings me to point number three. And that is don't cut corners and maintain integrity. How many times do you see some sort of political figure, they get elected, and then they just kind of veer? I mean, they just go crazy. You're like, oh my gosh, they've, they've taken advantage of their power. They take advantage of people. They take advantage of the system. And it becomes very, very frustrating and, and disheartening. And so as you're being an influencer, you constantly have to be in that place of having God put your heart in check. What can I do different? How can I do this? How can I influence things and help? And so Nehemiah, he res resists all these attempts that the enemies were trying to do to intimidate him, to deceive him. He didn't fall for the traps. He just, he just stayed focused on what he needed to do going forward. And he exposed the conspiracies. Can you imagine... When we talk about the moral decay in our country, we get involved in local areas of government. Imagine the exposure that we can do on all sorts of issues that are corrupt and the problems that we see. You think people like that? You think people are happy with it? No, people aren't happy with it. The problem is people don't know that it's even happening. And what do people want to do? They want to have job security, so they kind of take care of themselves instead of take care of the people of whom they're sworn to protect, right? And you watch people taking advantage of what they have instead of being true to what they're supposed to do, right? And so you don't want to be cut in the corners. Nehemiah exposes all of this, and then what does he do? He completes the wall in 52 days, something that they didn't think would happen, just so he can give the glory to God. You're going to get to a place where all of a sudden you're going to go, look, what I was able to do. Look at the change I was able to make. It says in Nehemiah chapter 6, verses 15 and 16, so on October 2nd, the wall was finished, just 52 days after we had begun. When our enemies and the surrounding nations heard about it, they were frightened and humiliated. They realized this work had been done with the help of our God. What is the testimony we want to have? 
in our communities where people are like, wow, that's a great place to live. You know what the communities have done is they've left it up to the government to make a community a wonderful community. But I can tell you no community can pull it off well unless God is at the center of the system, the program, how they operate, how things go, right? It's absolutely valuable. And so we really, really want to be able to have that to help build community. We talk about the divorce rate. We talk about all of these issues of people rising up and families against each other. Well, there's no support. There's no support. If you're not even going to church, you're not even exposed to God anymore. You're trying to find some level of community within your city, but the events that are happening are like all over the map, and people lose that sense of belonging. And that's why people struggle with depression and some of these other issues. It's because they need that opportunity to have the sense of belonging. And all of us can help build that in our own communities, in our own area, right around here. We can be doing things that will help bring that together. And so verse, uh, chapter 7, verse 2, it says, I gave the responsibility of governing Jerusalem to my brother Hanani, along with Hananiah, the commander of the fortress, for he was a faithful man who feared God more than most. What is, a, what is that talking about when we get to that place is Nehemiah built something and then was able to hand off for somebody to continue with. It doesn't mean you have to do everything. It doesn't mean you do all these different things. Right? Go back to what I talked about in the beginning. Do the things that you're good at. Do the things that God has called you to do, and then run with it. And then help other people get there. And everybody contributing to the community, everybody volunteering, doing something different in their community makes all the difference in the world. And then point number four is, well, we have to celebrate. We have to get to the place, after we've done all of this, and we've helped get something going, we celebrate the fact that there's a change in our community. We celebrate the fact that our community is stronger. That's what we want to see, right? Who wants to see a community that all the walls have fallen down and it's all in decay? You know what I'm talking about. Take a drive to certain cities. Just drive down in certain areas and you're like, oh man, is this place falling apart? And you know what it really takes is a few people with some brooms, brushes, paint brushes, and everything could be, look different. We say, well, these people are contributing and those people are contributing. All right? I talk about the, the, the homelessness all over the nation. Homelessness is a huge issue. And I can tell you, tons of people complain about it. If we had the amount of people volunteering to help fix that problem, as we do complaining about that problem, there wouldn't be a homelessness issue like we see in our country right now. Why? Because people have to get involved. If you want to see a change, if you don't like what you see, you have to do something about it. And somehow we just go, we'll leave it up to the government to do it, and then don't raise my taxes, right? Don't raise my taxes, but fix it. And at some point, it's like, wait a second, we all have a contribution. We have a responsibility to our community. The reason why the government wasn't so big decades and decades ago was because more people were involved. And the less that people get involved in helping the more somebody has to fill some sort of role and do things. And it's terrible because then we end up in a situation where we're being taxed to death and we lose all of the influence over the things that we want to see. You want to see that change? You get brothers and sisters to help work on it together. And then you get to celebrate it. And so in Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10, it says, Go and celebrate with the feast of rich foods, sweet drinks, and share gifts of food with people who have nothing prepared. This is a sacred day before our Lord. Don't be dejected and sad for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Now, how many people quote that all the time? The joy of the Lord is my, right? We hear the song about it. But how many people put that into context? Yeah, go make a difference in your community. Go contribute to your community and then celebrate what your community has become. We want to reach out. We want to see people's lives changed. But sometimes it's the most practical, everyday things that we lose sight of that make all the difference in the world right? And we get so caught up in, oh, I've got this, or I don't like seeing this, and I don't like that. And it's like, I can do a hundred different things saying I don't like something, but until I do something to make that difference, to make that change, that something will never change. And sometimes we just think, well, it's up to the, the governor in the state to do this and that. And sure, they set the stage for certain legislation. There's not a doubt about it. But what happens when the communities rise up and say, we're not going to have this? We're not going to have these issues in our community. We're going to do something about this, not in this community. 
We're going to do it differently. And so there are so many different things that we can do in our local community to co contribute to making a change. And you know what it's going to mean? It's going to mean a little bit of a sacrifice on your home, on your time. But when you're willing to do that and make that contribution and make that difference, we're going to see the fruit in our community. And we're going to see the things that we want to see. Because if we just think, oh, I can just do this by voting, I can just do this by complaining about somebody, which is probably one of my biggest issues, right? I like to complain about wh what's happening around me. But the fact of the matter is, is we have to mobilize. So I'm going to do something about this. If I don't like seeing all the trash all over in the city, then I'm going to organize a group that's going to help start cleaning up trash. And then when that trash person decides to go to city council and say, I want X, Y, and Z, do you think they're going to have a voice in that city? Absolutely they will. Absolutely. Because they're making a difference. And so as you just look at everything today and all of the issues that we go through, I think the biggest thing that I want to encourage all of us to do is think about how we can contribute to building our community. Now with that being said, I did a quick internet search just in Larimer County and Weld County. And I said, how many boards have vacancies in the county? You know how to get onto these different boards? You literally apply and the county commissioners appoint you. You now have a voice. Listen to this. Larimer County, I'll go through Larimer County first. Board of Adjustment, what is that? Anybody have any idea? There's going to be things like Board of Adjustments where, you know, somebody wants to put up a garage, the county says, ah, I have an ordinance, so you can't put up a garage within 50 feet of that tree or whatever it is. They need reasonable, everyday human beings that just sit on that board and say, that's off the rails. Yes, they can put a garage there. And then the people get a variance to be able to do that. Board of Appeals, people that appeal, why aren't they letting me put my garage here or maybe it's my house or maybe it's where I want to store a tractor. You know why our ch church doesn't have a sign out here on 126? Do you want to know why? Because the property isn't contiguous, not one property description. So we have, the church has this lot and then it has two other lots over there, but it's not one contiguous property description. I have to go through 6,000 hoops to get through all the property descriptions so Weld County will let me put a sign at the road. That's a fact. Is that reasonable? It's absolutely stupid in my mind, right? How do we fix that? Somebody being on the Board of Appeal saying, are you kidding me? It's Car Call there's nothing else there. The church owns both lots. Let them put the stupid sign up, right? But these are the battles that we fight and we get mad. And I'm saying, well, I can run and try and be on all these boards to fix this. And then God said, no, no, your church needs to get on boards and fix these things. We don't like the way we see abortion. We don't like the way we see uh, homosexuality. We don't like the way we see all these different issues, uh, what they're teaching our kids, whatever it is, we do something about it, right? Board of Health, Bree's on the Well County Board of Health, Citizen Review Panel. This is citizens that are reviewing what's the government doing and making comment on that and making recommendations to the county commissioners. Is that not a cupbearer? Is that not influence? Community Corrections Advisory Board, these are the people that are advising on what they think they should be doing with community corrections, people that have been arrested. Equity, Diversion, and Inclusion Advisory Board. I guarantee you, I'll tell you, the, the people that are on those kind of boards, wouldn't it be great to have a Christian individual saying, and don't forget about the Christian voice, if you're going to put a gay pride flag up at your municipal buildings, we also want to see the Christian flag hung, Right? That's legally right. That's the way it should be. How many municipalities have hung a Christian flag this year in the state of Colorado? Right? You want to see that change? Get on the board and say, hey, if we're going to hang that flag up, we also need to do it for this and this. Start talking about the unintended consequences that they're not thinking about, right? These types of things come out there. Estes Valley, I know I'll wrap up. Sorry, guys. I, I just want to go through it. Extension Advisory Committee, a Flood Review Board, Juvenile Community Board, we want to see changes, what's happening with the youth and the influences in the county? Get on that board. Land Stewardship Advisory Board, Lepore Area Planning Advisory Committee, Larimer County Interagency Oversight Group. That's part of what they're doing with that Interagency Police Academy that's between Loveland and Fort Collins. Office of the Aging Advisory Council. Don't want to watch how elderly people 
are treated. Like, think of what, what happened with COVID and all the stuff they did. Think about the voice that could have been different from people on that board going, hey, wait a second. We're just going to keep people prisoners because they're old? Is that what we do? Open Lands Advisory Board, you don't like to see what they do with open land? You can say something about that, right? Park Advisory Board, Planning Commission, Workforce Development, Environmental and Science Advisory Board. These are all opportunities for people just in Larimer County. So you want to get involved? Call Sarah Martin, 970-498-7149. Her email address is martin, M-A-R-T-I-N, S-E, like Sam Edward, at co.larimer.co.us. Then I said, well, I just look in wealth. Now, I know I didn't do Cheyenne, but I, I just did these, thinking of most people that live around here. Okay? Weld County Building Trades Advisory Committee, Extension Advisory Council, that's more like for some of the 4-H stuff, Human Services Advisory Commission, you don't like the decisions they're making on kids in the foster care program? You could say something about that. We like to just think, oh, these people just do it. Those department heads that are running those different services have to listen to those boards. I know. I had to listen to 911 Commission. I had to listen to City Council. I had to listen to the Wing Drug Task Force. I had all these boards. And all those people had a voice in what I did and how I performed. And it's the same thing that happens all around us. We want to be a cupbearer, and you want to have influence, and you want to tell people, I want to see some changes. We can call and complain. But if we get involved, they have to listen, especially when they get a majority vote coming from the board. They can't just be like, oh, well, we're not going to do that. It doesn't work that way. Now, can the county commissioners override sometimes? Yeah. City council, sometimes, some cases. But it doesn't mean we stop. Okay. Noxious Weed Management Advisory Board. Chuck Berkmeyer, uh, he comes here sometimes. He's on that board. Um, well, County Building uh, Code Board of Appeals, again, Another situation, the garage, the buildings, the, I can't have my corral this close to the road. It's all of these different things that adversely affect people. And we say, hey, let's use some common sense here, not just have checkbox rules. The Weld Faith Partnership Council, I was on that board. And I'm going to tell you why I got off that board. I couldn't get other pastors to get on that board. And they said it was a faith partnership, and it became the United Way, and it became a nonprofit partnership instead of a board of pastors trying to influence Weld County on maintaining some of the integrity that we wanted to see in our county. And I reached out to all sorts of pastors around here. And you know what I couldn't get? Anybody being willing to help participate. It's just as sad as it comes. And, and, and that's what we see all over the place. And then, of course, the Workforce Development Board. Again, how do we see people get work? We get upset that people are getting food stamps, or they're getting this issue, or they're getting that. And we say, well, what's this? Well, listen to the real problems that these counties or communities are facing, and then help make decisions that help direct things in a path that you want to see. So I know this isn't a typical you know, message that encourages us to you know, hang in there, but I also think that this is an important message for us to get involved in the communities around us. We all have to carve out time. If we don't like what they're going to teach in the schools, be on the school board. You know how hard they have, how many times they have openings on all of these different boards and they can't get people to fill them? Because people don't get involved. And I just want to encourage you. Our church, Mike Walker told me this with Serve 6 8. He said, dollar for dollar, Congregation size, our church is a heavier, more heavier contributor to serve 6-8 than the likes of Timberline and some of these big churches in Fort Collins, Resurrection Fellowship. I'm not trying to pick out any one church. I'm just saying these general churches, our church has more people volunteering and taking care. You saw all those little, little name tags going around? One person in our church did how many? 10,000 one person in our church did putting those ornaments together to go to all these trees in northern Colorado. I'm not saying our church isn't involved. I'm not saying I'm unhappy with our church. I just want to give you another avenue, another thing that if God puts on your heart, get involved. Do something else to help contribute to this thing because when we do that, we continue to gain influence. We continue to, to change what we see and preserve what we want. What do we want? You know, when Nehemiah said, this is what I have for my children, what do we want for our kids? What do we want for our grandkids and the people around us? How, what do we want this to look like? And I know it's hard because we all get caught up in work every day and my schedule's hectic and I got to do all this. The most beautiful blessing from COVID 
is Zoom. You can jump on these board meetings and Zoom, and you could be here, there, and everywhere. Sometimes you still need to try to be making them a person, but Zoom changed the world. So don't have to drive clear to Greeley and take three hours out of your day to be on a board that meets for 15 minutes, but you can do it off of Zoom. So there's a lot of opportunity there. I want to encourage everybody to really, really try to be that change. I feel like as we go forward in this coming year, God is calling us to absolutely do outreach, but outreach that doesn't look like what everybody thinks outreach is. Because when you can influence, as for example, the, 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 the school district that says you're not going to have these certain things as part of the textbook curriculum in our school. How many hundreds of kids' lives are you influencing? It's not about just everybody getting saved. It's how do we help bring morality back into our country and our community. And that's by all of us taking on little things. Well, I'll do this. I'll do that. Maybe one person gets on something and they have five people that are willing to help support them in what they're doing. I don't know how it looks, but please seek God and see what God has for you to do. But whatever you do, please continue to help build our community. Continue to help contribute so our community grows stronger. Will you please stand with me? I want to say a blessing over everybody. I absolutely believe that God gives us all sorts of great things that we can work on and guides us and directs us. So, Father God, I lift up everybody here. I thank you, Jesus, that you continue to strengthen us, you guide us, you direct us. Father God, if you're whispering in our hearts of different areas that we can get involved, we ask you, Father God, help us to become the cupbearers that influence this northern Colorado area, that make this area shine for you. That we can look at the people around us and say, yeah, we're doing this different. This community is a great community because we have your values in our community. Getting back to the basics, Lord, help us to get there. And we know, Lord, there's going to be attacks and there's going to be things that come up against us. We ask you, Father God, for the strength, the endurance to get through it and the patience that we can continue to persevere for your name's sake. I ask that you continue to bless everybody's here Continue to keep us protected. We thank you, Father God, for keeping Rocky safe this last week. All of these times that we could have these near misses, we know your hand is there to keep us safe. May your anointing continue to rest on our heads. Your spirit fill our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen.